Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and I want to talk to you again about uh, Odin and a new feature that I just added, added last night, and I'm pretty excited with the way this worked out. So um, to start with, I, I, I want to dive in a little bit to something that exists in Prologue. So in Prologue, you have the ability to say, um, to, to, to assert new rules, right, uh, in the middle of execution, or assert new data. So this would look something like assert, and then your new data would be something like, uh, you know, um, owns, and then you would have, um, you know, um, a Tim owns a cat, something like this, right? I mean, this isn't even prologue syntax, but whatever. Basically, what you're doing is in the middle of a query, adding new data. Now, there's a couple of things about that that I think that we need to um, dissect as something that, that's different in prologue than maybe a functional uh, of, or a immutable first query language like Odin. First thing is, is that if we go in the middle of a query and we, you know, add new data, so here we're querying from Datomic, right? So this is the syntax um, that Odin has for querying from Datomic. And down here we want to assert new information about this. What we don't want to do is have that influence the query as it's executing. We want to kind of build up new data to add to Datomic and then add it. And then if we want to see that data, we would need to query again, right? So we don't want this the data that we are looking at mutating underneath us. But the other thing that we need to be careful of is that we want to um, support backtracking. So we want something like this to say, um, uh, let's see here. We would want to be able to have an or clause. And I'm thinking, trying to think of a good way to do this. To be able to say, assert um, new data. So we would, we would want to add new data to our data, to our, let's say, datomic. So what we're going to be looking at today is datomic. We want to assert new data to add into datomic, but then later on be able to say, um, pass uh, name equals uh, name bill. Right. So we would assert this data, and this would needs to be in an and. And what we would expect to happen here is that we would only assert this information if the, the entire result completes. In other words, if we say we build up a whole lot of information we want to assert, and then later on one rule fails, we want to backtrack all the way up through our backtrack. We want to remove all of that data that we asserted. Now, that's what I thought that was a pretty sensible thing to do. So I looked it up. Hey, how does Prolog do this? Come to find out, like, no Prolog engines that I have seen, very few, actually support this. Asserting information in the middle of a Prolog query, actually, um, it, it's instantaneous. It's right there. Like, not only can you query for it right afterwards, but also um, it, it you can't backtrack. There's no way to say, oh, that failed. Go back through all the things I'm backtracking through and remove uh, any information that I've asserted previously. But you know what? We can do this pretty cleanly in Odin. So what we added is this thing called uh, context uh, tests, or uh, a context. A local cache is, is what I call it. It's a local cache of data. Um, and what you can do is add to it, update it, and get it. These are just the, ba the basic two primitives of that. Um, so the cache starts off with a nil value. So here's what it looks like. We can add to the local cache one, and, and so the, the syntax here is uh, a key in the cache. You want to make sure you namespace these. So the key in the cache that we're inserting in here is test, and we're just conjing in one and conjing in two, and then the local cache. We can get the local cache and bind it to result, and then we return the result. And what do you know? We get a list of one and two. So let's look at this real quick. We added one, we added two, and then we got it, and the result is two and one. Right. Now, let's look at how this is implemented. If we go through update local cache, it's actually really simple. We take the environment and we just add into the environment under a key called context. So up until this time, our context has always been of this format, LVAR data, LVAR2 data, right? LVAR3 data. And then 
What we've done now is added another possible key of context and then uh, key and val. A key two and val. So this is what it looks like now, right? So we're kind of smuggling this through. Now, because this is immutable data, all of our conjunctions and disjunctions work as we would expect. When we have a disjunction, we're kind of forking the context and everything with it. This is where immutable data has really um, kind of been a big feature, is that because, uh, so, so further clauses can see stuff in the context, right? But, but it's not necessarily going to change our current query results unless we ask for that to happen. I mean, we can query this context, right? But, but uh, we'll see how this works with datomic in just a little bit. So the rest of this here is basically we need to walk all of our arguments. So um, our arguments can be LVARs themselves, and those will just get applied to our function. So we're calling update in the environment context with key, and we're calling this function, right? So in our example before, this was conj, and this was a number. But that number could have also been an LVAR. And then get local caches is just get in, and we unify that to an LVAR um, after we get it out of the context of the given key. So let's go back to our test and take a look at this. So those are our two, um, our two primitives, right? So here's another example. Um, if we have a disjunction here with project, so we're projecting the range into four instances of data. So we're kind of forking the execution of this four times. Um, and then we're doing update local cache four times. And then we're getting it four times. What we get is the same result as before, but now split out into four lists because we have that disjunction. So we have four results that we've retrieved. Each one has a single instance. Now here's another example using or. So this is what I was talking about, is that if we have one and two, we have two distinct result sets. And in fact, if one of those fails, so here one, we have one and then we fail it out, we only actually have one result set of this value too. Okay, so that's the basic primitive. What does that allow us to do? Well, if we go to uh, datomic tests, it allows us to write stuff like we could do in Prolog. So what we're doing here is, uh, so I don't think I've shown this before, maybe I have. Um, we have an inner, a context in um, Odin for querying datomic, right? So you can give an entity attribute value, you give it a DB, and you can query it. So here we're going from person name, um, oh, we're finding the age of the of June. So we find the parent is Bill, we find all the children of Bill, we find the child whose name is June, and we get her age, and her age is, is 42, right? Um, likewise, um, we are finding here, we are getting all the parents and getting all of their children where one of the child is named June, and what do you know, Bill and Jane are the, are the parents, right? So this is basic uh, datomic querying, which it, it works pretty well. So now what we've added is this ability to, in the middle of a query, assert new data. And this has a new construct called a transact query. Um, and it takes a connection and a query. And what it expects you to do is inside this query called datomic add, uh, this is the datomic context um, uh, namespace in Odin, and it expects you to call add. So here we're adding a map. There's also ability to add uh, uh, just tuples, but here we're calling we're add a map. So we're adding two new people, Zeb and Zeke, and um, outside of this transaction running, we can then query. So if we find all the people in our database afterwards, we see Zeb and Zeke are now in that database. Well, this is a very clean way to query data and generate new data to execute. And that's what I kind of like about this, is that is that it gives you a somewhat um, imperative style, that in the middle of your query, you can define new data to assert. You're not returning, uh, you're, not, you're not specifying a query that binds to a certain thing or returns a certain thing. You, just, you can just assert new data, add new data in the middle of your query. So we see another example of that. Here's a hash map of uh, people and their ages. And then we're projecting that into a uh, key and value of name and age. And then we're creating a hash map of name and age. And then we're just calling datomic add. So we went from a hash map. You know, this hash map could have been out here somewhere. Um, and uh, in fact, we can run this test and see that that passes. In fact, we could do this here. 
um, we could say data like this, right? So now we're going from data to the pair, and if we run this, it, it runs just the same. So we're going from data to name and age, and then we're creating hash maps of that, and then we're just adding that in, and when we query again down here in this for query, we see uh, that uh, the new data is there, Z concept. So let's look at this transact query. It's actually pretty simple. So first of all, we're going to look at add here. So this is a helper function vconj um, because uh, it's just an optimization. So we're not recreating this function every time, but we're using fnil. So we have fnil conj and um, vector. So whenever we call fconj with a, a nil as the first argument, it's, it's creating a vector and adding to that. Unlike normal conj, which does it in a list. But. So then we're just calling update local cache and TX data vconj and then the map we receive. And EAV, the same thing, right? So we're just adding to that local cache. So then our actual query here is for query and then a conjunction of the query we pass into our macro. And the last thing we do is get from local cache the sim name. So each time we call add, we're adding to that that uh, local cache. And then the last thing we do is we get the sim name, or we get the data and put it in sim name, and then we return that from our for query. Now, if you remember, we have multiple, we could have multiple result sets. So if we add a bunch of maps, our result set will be something like this. Um, it will be map one, map two, map three, and then maybe another result set, right? And so we're calling cat to actually turn that into a flattened vector of, of hash maps, where we just have a single result like this, right, of a bunch of hash maps. That's why we're calling cat here, and then pouring that into a vector because Datomic expects a, a list-like uh, thing, and then we're calling transact. Uh, and that's, that's really it. Um, in fact, we, we, we don't even really need to have this be a function either, do we? We, we can uh, replace this with uh, defn. Um, I hadn't seen this until just now, uh, but we can, we'll, we'll, we'll simplify this a little bit. And I, I love doing this sort of thing. Something's wrong with my bindings. There we go. Um, I love doing this sort of thing because it's, it's kind of a, it shows how powerful Odin really is. Um, and that this, this query is already constructed for us. It's a, it's a, um, although that won't have proper pre-processing, will it? Okay. So we're just going to put this back. Uh, the pro it, that would have worked except that users will expect to be able to use, um, question mark, uh, things here. Um, I'll have to think about if there's a better way to, uh, to go about that. Uh, there probably is. Uh, at any rate, um, Let's go back to our datomic test and see this in action here. So um, I think I botched that up there. Uh, let's see here. I did miss something up here, didn't I? Um, oh, because I had a def end. Okay. Oh, this should work. There we go. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so th these are simple. These are simple tests, uh, but it's possible to get way more complex with this sort of thing. But but I like how we've, with very simple surgical edits to Odin, added something that, I mean, it kind of fell out of the design, but something that that prologue kind of a lot of engines struggle with: the fact that they are mutable, the fact that um, they don't often represent the current state of the program as data um, makes it harder to do this sort of uh, backtracking thing. Um, but it works pretty nice here in Odin. So that's the tutorial for today. Um, I'll probably expand this code. Uh, this is this is on the um, the Odin um, uh, master right now, uh, which, by the way, is at http uh, github.com slash halgari slash Odin. Um, if you go to this link, uh, the code is all there. I did a release recently. Um, and um, you can also uh, get these latest bits and play around with it. And, um, uh, you know, this test namespace has everything you need to, to work with Atomic with it, too. Um, and you can see that, um, uh, let's see, right here. 
uh, we can create databases and we have some sample data uh, and feel free to play around with that sort of thing. So what I would encourage you to do is we can do some some cool tests like um, uh, go through the database and add everybody's um, uh, parents or you know you could do something like like for every child um, get a list of their parents and add a link from the the child to the parent we currently have them we have we have uh, to the parents but you could add one to the children so find a link of everybody's uh, add a link from every parent to child it's not really needed but it's a fun query to write uh, you could also do things like um, you know go to every parent and add an attribute that's the average age of their children or something uh, so there's a lot of things that can be done there anyway uh, that's the uh, tutorial for today um, and uh, we'll continue on with some um, other stuff in the next tutorial thank you for watching